So this lesson five tutorial shows you how to actually have a score updating. So I'm going to leave this in and just remove the line by cutting it. Now if I go back to my main code, at the moment I haven't got a scoreboard. Um, I've only got my board, my height, my width variables. So what I'm going to do is create a scoreboard as sprite. So remember you go to add new action. You want a global variable because you're also going to teach your students about global variables. Like these are variables that can be updated all the time. So V. And what you need to make sure is you set it as a sprite, not a number. Uh, so this is going to be a sprite. So we're going to call this score. Scoreboard. Okay. So I've got my scoreboard, and if I go back to my game, so I'm going to main, I'm going to put it up here, add. What I want to do is create the scoreboard, so watch, I'm going to go to data, scoreboard, assign, alright, and I'm assigning it to the board, data board, and I'm going to create text so it's not here to so go along let's have a look again it's not there so let's have a look there it is create text it was on the first page and you can change these to whatever you like so for example it could be 60 each one means something different and this here is what it will display so I'm going to have a zero there and what I want to do next is actually set the position. So I want this text. Uh, let me remove that again. So I want it to display zero to begin with. Then I want to set the position. So if I add another line under it, I can do data, scoreboard, set position. And I'm going to just do this at 200 by 200 so you can see where it is all right and you can also go to data scoreboard and you can set the color as well now originally it comes up random but if you just press the backspace you can pick a color so I'm going to pick orange so that it can be seen so let's run this and see what happens. So let me just show you the code. So I've created my text, set the position, and set the color. So now if I run this, let's debug that and see what the error is. So scoreboard, create text. So let's see, using invalid value, let's see, my scoreboard, board, Right, now the reason why this has come up as invalid is because it's done earlier on. So if we go down, alright, so let's exit this and select, let's cut this, alright, because we haven't created the board yet, so that's why we got our error message. Go down, paste it, let's run it now and you can see that's the zero there. Now it's good that I made that mistake there because that's a mistake that your students might do. I tried creating the scoreboard on and sending it to the board but the thing is I hadn't created my board yet here. So that's created my scoreboard. Now in order to update my score, let me run it and show you it. So there it is, zero. I need to go to my game loop all right, and originally you'll notice that I've got I had score overlap there, and that didn't really work, so that's why I removed it. Now, what you want to do is create a new variable for the actual score, so add a variable, and this one we're going to create a number main game score. Alright, so there it is main game score. So when it overlaps with the football, 
what I want it to do is data alright main game score alright equals data main game score plus one so it's going to increase it by one each time now what we need to do is make sure that the text is set so watch so now I need to go to data school board set the text but what we're setting it to if we remove those is a variable uh, main game score and we need to convert it back to text now one last step with a global variable when teaching your students the whole point of it being global is that it can be accessed and it can be used over and over we haven't set up what main game score is equal to yet we're only adding one to it each time so go back to main and down the bottom or up here at the start of our game we can say data main game score is equal to zero to begin with alright so if I run it now when I overlap you can see it's increasing each time so I'll go back let me just walk you through that I set up my global variable the main game score I've got my game loop and what I've done is when I overlap with the football use the global variable which I set up in the main code and add one to it then use the scoreboard which we set up in main and set it to whatever main game score is now equal to and because it's text we need to move it back to a string that's one thing we need to teach our students about the difference between strings variables types such as integer and so on so see if your students can give that a go and I'll move on to lesson six